the history of aftercare instructions for body piercings. Gonna go through the last 25 years or so, some of the thinking behind it, some of the reasons why we don't suggest doing that anymore, and why your piercer may still be suggesting some of these ideas that are not good. Coming up next on Body Piercing Basics, episode number 74. So stick around. For those that are brand new to the channel, my name is Davo. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I own and operate the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located here in Des Moines, Iowa, inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So when I talk to you about these things, I'm talking with a level of expertise as somebody that's been in the industry for well over 26 years. Today's topic is one that I've been kind of thinking about for a while. Um, it's probably one of the most common questions I get uh, on comments here is, my purser told me to do this, is that a good idea? And a lot of this information is outdated. It's because your piercer's not doing enough research or they were trained to tell you to do this or they work in a studio where whoever's in charge of setting up the aftercare has said, hey, this has been working for 25 years, why change it? I have had over roughly a dozen different versions of my aftercare instructions over the years. Uh, they've changed as the industry progressed, as information became available. I was never very like bleeding edge, need to change this right now. I usually would stick with something, test it out with a few clients that I knew had a long history of healing piercings, see how it worked out, and then moved into a new version of it. When I first started, most of the information was coming from Gauntlet um, in Piercing Fans Quarterly, Quarterly International and Fakur in that whole kind of initial group of professional piercers. They were the first ones to do it. Most of the information they were going on was stuff that they had heard from medical professionals. Uh, the idea behind it was, well, unlike a normal wound where you get a cut on your body and it heals in a few days or a few weeks, depending on the depth, with piercings, you're doing something completely different. You are making a wound and then putting a piece of material in it that's going to keep that wound from closing. It takes much longer for your body to not only go, oh, this is what should happen and start producing that tissue around the jewelry, but to do that. So it's an open wound for a much longer period of time than what the body is normal, normally used to and what your immune system is normally used to. The idea was that if you had an open wound on your body for six months, you were gonna make a mistake. So daily precautions needed to be taken um, to a very extreme uh, extent to ensure that if you did introduce a foreign pathogen into the piercing, it was gonna be killed off immediately, or at least one of the two times a day that you cleaned it. So my early aftercare instructions involved two, two heavy, hardcore products. The first one being Betadine. Uh, the other one being Hibiclens. Those unfamiliar with those two products are both surgical scrubs. They're extremely harsh. Uh, they are very effective. And to this day, I still use Betadine or generic Betadine to disinfect uh, the piercing area before I do it. It's very effective. Uh, hospitals still use it, etc. However, in the method that we were using and what we were telling to people to do, it doesn't really make a lot of sense or it really does help to prolong the healing period and increase the likelihood of issues and all those other things. Basically, what we were telling people to do is jump in the shower, take care of your normal bathing duties, spray the water onto the general piercing area to remove any discharge. If you needed to, use your fingernail. Then take this Betadine or Hibiclens pour it over the area so that you're saturating it, then grab the ring and rotate it and work it through the piercing about six to 10 times and then rinse under running water. As you can guess, this was very, very intrusive. <laughs> it just agitated the piercing. He had piercings that were a lot more grumpy for a longer period of time and were prone to issues. The first thing to change was, well, the other thing we told people to do was for the first three days to use an antibacterial ointment. Bacitrace and zinc was generally what we suggested because that's what we were told to suggest. 
anybody uh, that has done anything with piercing knows this, this is not a good idea. Bastard's and zinc and other ointments are not designed for puncture wounds or deep wounds. Piercings are deep puncture wounds. The problem with ointments is it blocks the flow of oxygen in the area, which can cause issues. It also blocks your body's ability to discharge waste and et cetera. If the piercing is actually infected, it can block your body's ability to push out that infected tissue and fluids. The other problem with it is it creates a nice petroleum film that collects dirt, debris, and other stuff. So even though the packaging stated not for deep wounds or puncture wounds, we still suggested using it for the first three days. So when I revised my aftercare instructions, the first two things to go were bacitrates and zinc. The second thing was hibiclins. And the reason why hibiclins went out of the product uh, suggestion is because there was a Study, rumor, what have you, that hibiclins could cause deafness. Uh, it was the first to go. Years later, it was proven that wasn't the case. But at the time, there was that risk. So we got rid of that. Basically, the way we used to suggest it was hibiclins or anything above the neck, uh, below the neck, betadine. The next change that would happen is uh, we would introduce or suggest using ear care solution for above the neck piercings. Uh, this is a benzothorchloride-based solution that if you go to your local Claire's, you can pick up right now. It is also extremely harsh and prone to issues, including re allergic reactions and other problems. There has been, uh, it has pretty much replaced tricolacine as the main antibacterial uh, product in most antibacterial uh, soap sprays, etc. It is very harsh and it's not really designed to go inside the body. And with ear care solution, there's an extremely high percentage of it. Um, there is more in there than there is in Dial Basic. We switched out to that for above the neck. Next version. After having years and years of people having issues with Betadine and it just seemed like it was just making everything dry up and be worse, the next thing most people suggested in the new information was to use a mild antibacterial liquid soap. And because this fabulous product had just entered the market called Tricolacine, which was absolutely everything, we all suggested switching from Betadine to antibacterial soap um, twice daily in the shower and continuing with the rotation for a little while, I think. I don't remember. The rotation eventually went away. Um, the thing with antibacterial soap is it's probably the most consistently suggested product over the years. Um, it had a glory day from about 90, I'd say 96, 97, well into the 2000s. Um, most piercers still suggest it. Um, it's not uncommon for people to suggest it. I personally no longer suggest it unless it's a situation where you know that you've contaminated the piercing and you need to clean off the contaminant. For example, if you have your nose pierced and your significant other sneezes on it, then it's probably a good idea to go clean it with a mild antibacterial liquid soap or just plain soap and water, just to cut down on the possibility of that foreign microorganism working its way into the piercing. Otherwise, don't use it on a daily basis. The next thing that would come into play would be compresses and soaks done with sea salt. We would suggest that you would take distilled water, um, heat it up in the microwave, a cup of it, and drop it in an eighth of a teaspoon, a quarter teaspoon of sea salt, let it dissolve, then we would suggest either uh, soaking it up with a clean paper towel laying it against the piercing or um, actually taking a medicine cup or shot glass size cup or a bowl and basically creating a vacuum and soaking the piercing for about 10 minutes. This is still very effective in a lot of situations. However, since more sterile saline has become very available, that it's premixed, where we don't have to worry about people oh, putting too much salt in or too little salt in um, or overheating it or et cetera. I generally don't suggest using that. Um, over the last, I would say year, I have gone to straight saline in all cases, regardless of the piercing. 
Um, I should go back and say that the first thing I, uh, the next thing I eliminated was uh, ear care solution. I've already kind of covered why that has become a bad idea. Um, and with ear care solution goes a lot of other products, uh, things like um, uh, Bactine, <laughs> which is a common one people suggest. Um, the other thing that would go that was going around there for a while was uh, emu oil. I've never used it. I've never had clients use it. I'm unsure if it's effective or not, but it's very expensive. Uh, the other thing would be piercers mixing up their own concoction, which would have everything from sea salt, distilled water, to lavender um, extract, uh, aloe vera, um, and tea tree oil. Um, and I should probably talk about tea tree oil. Tea tree oil, I don't suggest using it. It's often too harsh. It needs to be diluted. It needs to be diluted properly. And most people don't. Uh, everybody that's gotten a bump at some point has been suggested that you use tea tree oil. My experience is, is usually um, if it's a you know, scar tissue that's being caused from trauma, it actually makes it worse. It makes it go away for a little while, maybe subside a little bit, but it'll actually come back worse. Uh, it can be used to a degree for infections, but usually infections are very much misdiagnosed. Um, it definitely needs to be diluted. It is not the best thing to use on an open wound, and I do not suggest using it. And using it in your daily, just normal aftercare instructions is really, really pro negative or uh, what am I, not proactive. What's the opposite? In using it in your daily aftercare instructions really is just setting yourself up for issues. I really don't advise it. Um, as far as antibacterial soaps, tricolosine kind of went out the window and was replaced with benzothorchloride. Uh, it's in pretty much all the antibacterial um, soaps and et cetera. Like I said, except in situations where it's contaminated, you shouldn't use it. So what does saline do? Why is it this magical product that seems to be taking uh, care of everything? Basically what it does, it helps to draw waste and debris from the piercing. It increases circulation and the flow of oxygen. It can help with, uh, it contains minerals and nutrients that are helpful in your body's production of skin cells. It also will help to soothe it and it can reduce swelling. Basically in essence, what you're doing is you're helping your body by removing that discharge, keeping the piercing hole open and giving it what it needs to heal quickly. The process has gone from at the beginning where we thought everybody was an idiot and was going to make a mistake and get an infection to, hey, here's what we can do to help our body heal, keep the piercing clean and free of debris, um, and not cause any additional trauma that may prolong or the, the healing or cause other issues. So it's gone from really intrusive to very little intrusive. My experience is, is it has been somewhat of a healthy balance. I was very skeptical for a lot of years about not using some form of antibacterial something or other to kill off bacteria and microorganisms. However, since switching to straight saline, I've seen a reduction in bumps, I've seen faster healing times, and I've seen people with less issues. If you really want some signs that your piercer doesn't know what they're talking about and needs to do some research, Number one, if they tell you to rotate the jewelry. Number two, if they suggest using harsh products that have antiseptic or antibacterial points to them. Number three, if they advise you not to use sea salt or any type of saline solution. Those are the three things that you probably want to stay away from and avoid when it comes to aftercare instructions. Whenever in doubt, ask your piercer why. If they're suggesting you do something, why are you suggesting I do this? Um, it's very important to kind of go through that process and what their thinking is. Uh, there are people out there that say you don't need to do anything. Just clean it in the shower and that's enough every day. Personally, I understand this philosophy, um, but the reality is, is that you're not going to see as quick or as easy as a, of a heal by not doing anything. 
So now, since we've removed all of these antibacterial and antiseptic products from aftercare instructions, it makes it even more important that you understand how to avoid cross-contamination. And that's things like washing your hands, things your mom taught you, washing your hands, uh, keeping your environment clean, avoiding oral contact, um, avoiding contact with unclean objects, isolating the piercing, and just and not submerging it in bodies of water you can't control the quality of, which I'm sorry is everywhere you're thinking about swimming. If you do those things, then there really is no reason for all this, or avoid those things, I should say. Don't do those things, avoid those things. If you do that, there's no reason for these really harsh chemicals to be used in contact with growing skin, and you're gonna see better results. So I hope you found this helpful. I hope it wasn't too much of me babbling because I know I can do that and those things ran a bit long. If you watched till now, give us a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it. Let me know that you learned something. If uh, you have a question, like I brought up something and your peers just told you something different, or maybe uh, you've had experience with healing with some of these methods and you'd like to share your experience, please leave a comment. I try to answer them every day and I will continue to do that until I can't do that anymore. As in there's so many that I don't have time. Also, uh, make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell uh, so that you're notified every single time we post a video. If you like swag, you know, t-shirts, hoodies, decals, uh, tote bags, all that fun stuff, check out our merch store. Plenty of designs there by our artists and myself and different colors and products to choose from. Links in the description. Also, there's a merch bar below uh, to check out. Till next time, here's hoping all your piercings heal with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see if your body piercing needs in the future. Have a good day, everybody. Um, enjoy yourself. Uh, stay safe, especially uh, if you are in the southern part of the United States. It might be a good idea to stay in and stay away from everybody for a little while until this thing starts cooling off again. Um, I'm lucky. I live in Iowa. We're seeing a re we're seeing a reduction while everybody else is seeing a, re a, a resurgence or a surge. So please stay safe. We'd like to keep you as a viewer and we want you healthy. So thank you for watching. Have a good day.